Um, ultimately, it was uh, just a fun little thing. Threw some tacos on a pizza, put it together in a video, called it a show. 100,000 people tuned in. The next episode had 600,000 people tune in. The third episode had 1.2 million people tune in. I quit my job and committed to the show fully. And then fast forward about a year and a half, both of them quit their jobs. And now here we are, four and a half years later, we've never missed a week. We have 450 videos online. We have our TV show aired in the US. It's airing in the UK now. Cookbooks, cooking sets, and uh, we work full time together now. Pretty amazing. I mean, did you guys ever think that what you started up that many years ago would turn into what it is today? Yes, we actually yeah. did, all of it. First video, the, uh, the first video came up and I was like, ooh, people are gonna love this. I can't wait to host an event in Dundas Square in four years from now. <laughs> he, he's got a time machine, he can know everything. I mean, what is it that you think about your videos? As we've been able to meet an array of people, things that just stick, but what is it about Epic Meal Time that really stuck with the audience? What do you think it, it was? I believe that what really stuck with the audience on Epic Meal Time was, uh, you know, we first uploaded in 2010. We were four dudes in the kitchen, five dudes in the kitchen, you know, just all guys in there making crazy food creations. And for one, no one was doing what we were doing with food. No one was making bacon wrapped fast food lasagnas. Uh, no one was really like a Wu Tang clan of cooking where it was just like a motley crew stuffed in the kitchen working together and having fun. And ultimately, cooking was something that was scary and intimidating to approach for your everyday guy that may look like us three. And when we did it and we took, we, we approached it, you know, fun and let's have fun with this, let's see where it goes, I think it inspired lots of people themselves to start cooking and start being foodies. And, uh, and I, you know, we did that just because we had fun and we approached it and cooking was always something that was like, I felt was serious before us. Cooking was like a serious thing. And then after us, cooking, I find, got goofy after 2010. I feel like if you look at cooking, the game of cooking after 2010 took this whole turn where people wanted to take risks and do fun stuff and crazy stuff. And it just wasn't simple anymore. Yeah, and I we, feel like uh, we did that. We really like took the smart out of cooking and sort of sprinkled dumb over everything, but in a smart way. Like, like that's what we usually say what we do. We, we make, we're so smart, we're so dumb, it's smart in our cooking style. So It's interesting because you talk about, you know, when you guys started up, there wasn't anything like this online, but now there's a saturation of, of videos, people all trying to do something. I mean, is it harder, do you think, now, even though it's only been a few years, but is it harder to come out and, and make a name on YouTube to get to that high profile like you guys and the other people here have done? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, in, in one respect, it's not like anyone's doing what we're doing online. I see kind of on, online people will homage us or parody us. On TV, people will really try and emulate what we're doing and it ends up being like, watch four wacky friends, it's bacon silly. wrap ice cream. And it's like in a, kind of like an attempt to do what we were doing, but this is a genuine thing that we were doing, and it caught on. Now, secondly, is it is it harder to be a YouTuber now? Yes and no. One, uh, for us, it was hard to get a quality camera, edit it, put the video together, and upload it in 2010, and now you could do it all on your iPhone like that. But the problem with that is there's a lot more people doing it. I have a friend that you know is a guidance counselor, and when he sits there with high school students, he says 25% of the kids that aren't paying attention in school are just like, oh, I'm gonna be famous on Vine. I'm gonna be famous on YouTube. And that wasn't something you ever heard when we were younger, so you know that there's a lot more people out there trying to make a name for themselves. But truth be told, like I was saying before, there are you know hundreds of thousands of users with over a million subscribers on YouTube. Like YouTube is creating careers out there. It's creating dreams out there. We're fortunate that we got in early and we were able to do this now full time. And I mean, just on that note, how viable of a career is it? Like, are we gonna see kids going into university and there's gonna be courses that are like, here's, you know, here's the art of making a YouTube video. Like, a lot of people look and say, how do you make money? How do you, how can you quit your job? And uh, what, is that, what is it in that world? Give us an inside peek as to how the business model works. Well, uh, you know, there are many ways, there are many avenues of revenue. For us, the AdSense that just comes on a YouTube video that's there, that's present, that is usually the foundation for most channels. And if people have a large enough fan base, they'll sell posters and merchandise and t-shirts. We do cookbooks and, and, and t-shirts and cooking sets. And, and that's to supplement as well, you know, the ad revenue that we'll get, just, you know, all those ads that you probably skip. Every time you skip that ad, 
you're, you're skipping our money. That's our life, so please stop skipping ads. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding about that. I'm kidding about that. But the, the ad revenue, and then we'll work with, you know, we'll, we'll have the benefit of working with companies. I mean, we're, we worked with Taco Bell Canada recently, and, you know, that was an awesome opportunity. We worked with Budweiser. We've worked with video game companies like Ubisoft. And, and that as well is what really builds the foundation for the quality of our channel. Because you can do it. You can start a YouTube channel, but if you really want to bring a huge cinematic quality to it and really up the scale of what people will get from your channel, then that comes from, you know, advertisers buying in that want to tap into the community that we have. Because, I mean, you know, there's, there's content out there. You can make content, and that would be the equivalent of making a commercial or an ad that someone might skip or scroll by. But when it comes down to, you know, what we're doing, we're, you know, I, I completely lost my train of thought. This cameraman creeped in. Here, the, yeah. the thing is, is that like any business, no matter what genre you're in, no matter if you're in entertainment or like taxes, there has to be a business infrastructure, which is what we figured out really early on. We're a crew of people. There's a, a bunch of employees behind the business as well. And by doing all these brand integrations and these ad integrations and selling our merchandises, we have the fundamentals to sustain our business and it just keeps growing that way and it's like we work tirelessly like we're constantly together we literally live and breathe this when we're not on camera we're writing off camera Monday to or, Friday 9 to 5 like but, it's a Monday to Friday 9 that. to 5 it, job and, it, and often it's beyond that you yeah know? when you're when you're looking at your social media and stuff like that and what I was saying before was you know as advertisers might want to be content creators as well and create a piece of content that'll be a commercial or an ad that you skip on YouTube when they buy into what we do, they're buying into a community. And they're not creating content, they're creating something that taps into our community fan base and reaches out to individual people that we tap into all the time, like what Josh is saying, 24 hours a day, you can reach Josh on Twitter or see him on Snapchat. You know, you could play video games with Amir. These are things that are available all the time beyond just a regular nine to five. And, you know, our, our, our businesses here, or at least for us, is you know, built off of advertisers that want to get involved with our community. And the benefit for us being a large crew is that, you know, you'll see Amir on Xbox Live and you'll see Harley on uh, Roar or uh, Twitch and me on Snapchat and we have such a vast range of social media that if you really want to connect with any of us, no matter what time of day, what, where, we're there.